Okay, I'm gonna make an attempt here to film a DVD Blu-ray collection overview video and you have to forgive the messy apartment Although if you remove all movies, I mean, it's pretty it's basically just furniture in here. So it looks really messy <laughs> All these movies on my coffee table uh, Various other bits and pieces um, but honestly, it's it's just small so it's hard to get everything in here, so it's just cramped and it looks like hell. But this is my apartment, or at least this is where I usually hang out. Um, I, I'm i gonna get to my own collection in just a moment, but um, my collection, so if, you, if we just take a look at my apartment and a bunch of trash here, lovely. Um, I used to have my collection sort of spilling into the, the hallway in here and you may 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 want be wondering like what, what do you mean used to <laughs> you have movies here um, but uh, this is the stuff that I'm selling this is my store and I have stuff in the kitchen too but it's a little bit too messy to want to show on camera at the moment and then this stuff in here as well and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I gotta get, get rid of boxes boxes it's just a when you order stuff and you know that you sell a lot of stuff yourself um, it's just good to keep the boxes because you can use them for your own sales but um, they accumulate and I don't really <laughs> I don't know how, how much I should keep and uh, it's just a mess so this uh, closet in here and again just stuff hanging all over it looks great looks wonderful oh well this is like the the storage um, well this is the packing material I should say um, actually the previous tenant told me that the tenant before that uh, which would have been many years ago now but she or he I don't know they used to sleep in here so it is quite a big closet uh, there used to be a door here that I've removed um, but uh, yeah so I just used this for my um, packing material room and then I have different sections of stuff that I'm selling, so it, it's a little bit different, but essentially it's all stuff that I'm selling. So I decided some time ago that I um, I needed more space for my store, so I, I've, I've sold a lot of stuff and um, just tries, tried to fit my whole collection in, in the living room. So this door frame you see here, when you walk... When you walk inside of this door frame, then you get to my lair or my collection. <laughs> so this is the cutoff point, basically this door. But yeah, um, I don't know what, where I should start really. But I, like I said, I do sell stuff. I sell stuff uh, quite quite frequently compared to what I used to do. Um, and uh, my rule for selling is, do I think I'm going to keep this or do I think I want to watch this again? If I'm like, uh, no, not, not really, well, then I'm going to sell it. I'm not just going to hold on to it because I want a big collection. So um, if I think the last time I made a collection overview might have been 2016, so four years ago. And if you go back and you compare, it might not look a lot different. It might not really look like... My collection has been growing which is mostly because that's exactly the case because I'm selling about as much as I'm buying um, but anyway this is the um, boutique label section so uh, I used to have um, a glass cabinet here but um, it, it was just a bit cumbersome or it was in the way it took up a lot of space and so I have taken it down and um, I'm planning on having the same solution here as I'm having here at some point I want to get more um, more um, shelving units um, yeah so this is um, 88 films BFI criterion this is Eureka indicator and then here these two rows are these two shelves are arrow video and academy 
And you know, <laughs> this coffee table of mine is completely dominated with mostly Blu-rays, but DVDs also. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here that I haven't talked about yet that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> that I intend to watch. It's just that when you buy a lot of stuff, even if I watch a lot of stuff, which I do, um, it's kind of hard to keep up with the spending, um, I suppose. Yeah, but um, no, it's not a bad problem to have. <laughs> All these piles of movies waiting, waiting, waiting to be watched. Um, I usually keep stuff in the um, the window that I haven't updated, and then these piles are stuff that I haven't seen, but which aren't really a priority. And then at the top here, I have. Well, we have a few box sets. We have an Ulrich Sadel box set, Andrei Tarkovsky, Anya Varda, which I'm currently working my way through. Uh, and Mel Brooks, Godfather, Herschel Gordon Lewis. Um, but behind that, we have a bunch of British comedy shows and a few drama shows at the end, but mostly comedy from the UK. Uh, this is Stand Up. And these piles and those piles, they are random stuff that I don't really want to keep. I just haven't, well, they're not really worth much, so I haven't gotten around to selling them yet. Right, here uh, to the left. So my collection, the order of my collection is basically um, uh, genre um, and so on. So here I have Swedish stuff, which is not a genre, but it's just easy to keep my Swedish stuff together. And I've sold a lot of this over the years, like a ton of it. A lot of the documentaries and the comedy shows. I just, uh, I mean, honestly, <laughs> in the case of the comedy shows, they tend to be worth quite a lot. So I can't really justify keeping them, even if maybe I would like to see them again at some point. But you can also find a lot of those shows online for free, so, and they don't usually have special features, so I just, uh, I don't need to keep, I don't need to keep all that stuff. Um, here is more Swedish stuff. Here is animation. And I do have double rows. Um, I didn't always have that, but then when I moved everything into the living room, I didn't, I simply didn't have enough space to, to have. Uh, uh, well, to have the single rows basically. So, but it, it works pretty pretty well to um, to um, you know to find stuff. It usually it usually doesn't take me longer than maybe thir thirty seconds to find a title. But anyway, so I can't you can't really see everything, and I'm not gonna move stuff around. This I just noticed this a while ago. This <laughs> shelf um, shelf here. If we look at, yeah, we have the Simpsons right there. So both these rows are like adult comedy shows or, you know, Simpsons, Family Guy, American Dad, South Park. So it's more than I would have thought, but I don't really buy this stuff anymore because it's not, well, it's not really a priority. I prefer to buy other stuff, uh, but I still like that, like this stuff. Uh, we have uh, more comedy shows going down, and then drama. This I've also um, sort of um, reduced quite a bit, this section. Selling a lot of TV shows that I don't want to keep because maybe they're on a streaming service or whatever. Maybe I just don't want to watch them again. And I must apologize, my laundry is in the way, but there's no other way, no other place to keep it. Um, we move into a sort of TV series with, um, well, documentary TV series. And then eventually uh, just regular documentaries or nature documentaries back there. This is a big David Attenborough box set and his stuff continues all the way <laughs> to this. But I don't really buy that stuff anymore. Um, but I like that section. Um, 
these documentaries, they, um, they are, I want to say they're in order, but they're not really. I mean, some of the sections are, like you can see a bunch of movie documentaries here. Uh, Corman's World, Corman's World, yeah, I guess so. And then, you know, this one about um, the making of Island of the Lost, no, Island of Dr. Moreau. Um, and all kinds of movie documentaries, American movie, uh, yeah, film worker, Isao Takehata, a lot of movie documentaries, but for, for most of the documentaries, I've tried to keep them in order or in terms of like category, some of them are social or historical or political or, or just movies about eccentric personalities, I've tried to keep that stuff together, but it is, it is difficult. Um, because um, it's hard to know where to put everything. So this section is a little bit of a mess, some of that, but most of it I know where it is. Then down here is basically music documentaries. And again, I've, I used to have a lot more metal DVDs. I've just kept the ones that I really like or the ones that I haven't seen yet. I mean, you know, Opeth, Therion, Primordial, Halloween, Behemoth, these sets are amazing. Um, but I don't really watch them now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when the last metal DVD I watched was. It would have had to be years ago. Not that I don't like it still. It's just not... I don't know. You just... You, you get into things when you have a lot of interests or a lot of um, genres that you like. kind of goes... Uh, goes back and forth between... I mean, you, you have periods of watching stuff and then not really watching them as much. But I still like them. Um, I haven't actually seen these two enslaved DVDs. Um, yeah, I mean, I have I have <laughs> music DVDs outside of the metal genre as well. Um, but um, those are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually, so it's I, I I haven't been quite sure how to transition. From genre to genre in some cases so in the case of music documentaries it goes into drama films about music and then we have a film called metalhead which is an icelandic film about music so after this one we transition from music documentaries to dramas about music to foreign films so this is the start of the foreign section so we have uh, yeah iceland um, two Finnish movies, then some Danish movies here. And then, let me get up. And then Norway. And this is where I would have put the Swedish stuff. <laughs> but again, I have a separate section for that because that's my nationality. Maybe I could have mentioned that before um, in case everybody, everybody doesn't know. Uh, yeah, so German stuff. Um, uh, I'm not going to mention every country, but <laughs> every country is together, or it's supposed to be anyway. Uh, quite a lot of French stuff, as you could imagine. Uh, and then, let's see, the foreign films end with with Gloria, which has been remade, I think, with Julianne Moore. So that's the last of it. So this is like the South American section. Just not not a lot, actually. I think it's just these. From South America that doesn't look like en enough I'm sure I have a few more elsewhere maybe in the put boot boutique section but then after that we go into dramas um, and they are in chronological order so gra grapes of wrath best years of our lives so on um, <laughs> and then we have the room and fateful findings in the drama section because where am I supposed to put them? <laughs> they, they were meant to be serious movies so I guess they they belong here. <laughs> it does feel a bit strange to have like Hotel Rwanda, Nil by Mouth, The Room, <laughs> Into the Wild, The Queen line. Yeah but uh, I don't know it's hard to uh, figure that out sometimes where to put some titles. And then Eventually the dramas, I mean, we, we work ourselves up to, you know, somewhat current 
So these are the latest movies that I have on Blu-ray, I suppose, which is not a lot, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then we have A Matter of Life and Death. Why is this here, you ask? Well, because I have a section for uh, supernatural drama films or drama films with like a supernatural touch. Um, and then I gotta move these out of the way. Yeah. So then we. <clears throat> this is one of my one of my favorite sections. This is comedy. So we start from the beginning once again with Chaplin, Buster Keaton. I mean, uh, I still haven't haven't upgraded Chaplin to Blu-ray. So this is all I have of his movies. I would love to get those uh, criterions of his movies, but um, don't have a region-free player at the moment. And the artificial eye Blu-rays, I've heard some negative things about them. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but I don't, you know, Ch I'm, I'm <laughs> I've seen them. And I know the movies. I don't feel like I absolutely need to see them again now. But it would be nice though to have the Blu-rays. Um, but Buster Keaton, I only have two little DVDs left because everything else has been upgraded to Blu-ray, so I haven't kept the rest of it. Um, Harold Lloyd, it's a pretty difficult set to find nowadays. I haven't seen them all. Of course, everything is. Now this happens. I'm trying to put it back in, but I only have one hand, so I gotta be lightning fast. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not lightning fast. Um, maybe I can come back. Okay. And uh, Marx, Marx Brothers, and then eventually, I don't know. Uh, it happened one night. Uh, Some like it hot. Breakfast at Tiffany's. This is hard to get also, the Jerry Lewis box. I've only seen a few of these, and it's been forever since I did, but this is actually up for sale. <laughs> I have a few of those titles that I, for for the right price, I can, I, I can imagine getting rid of them, but it's still in my own collection because I, I want to see them, but if it happens to sell, then okay, it's set at a price that's, that I can uh, live with and it's quite quite high so I don't think it's gonna sell but you know you, you can have uh, some auctions up like that I suppose so that's my that, that has been my decision uh, Monty Python quite a lot of Monty Python stuff uh, the rattles oh I got this I don't know if I've shown this in the video but I got this not too long ago Romans with a double bass really funny short little slapstick farcical comedy with uh, John Cleese and Connie Booth. Yeah, I'd recommend that one. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is also one of my favorite sections. This is the French comedy, especially the Louis de Funès films, all the way from this box set to this DVD. And a lot of these have like a number of movies, so. I like those. They're also quite hard to get. These two box sets in particular are quite difficult to find. Um, more comedy, and now we can you can see that we're getting pretty up to date with the comedy as well. And a little, I suppose, a little Edgar Wright section here at the end, and Simon Pegg. And then down here we have Christmas movies. I had a lot more in the past. This used to be one of my favorite things to collect or to watch or, you know, just period. But I don't really watch a lot of that stuff anymore. I might watch a couple Christmas movies in December, but not usually more than that. But uh, I've kept the ones that I think I might want to return to. Um, this is the best one, I think. <laughs> Out of them all. Or one of them, anyway. Um, my battery is actually running out, so you know what, I'm gonna have to just charge my phone real quick and we'll continue here in a moment. And we are back. I uh, took a break to do some vacuum cleaning and uh, uh, listening to some King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. <laughs> um, now I'm back. My 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 phone is fully charged. We can continue where we left off. And something I thought that I would do just just uh, just quickly after this, um, 
I realize this might not be the ideal way <laughs> to go through a collection in a video, but um, well, I haven't done this in a while, and so I wasn't really sure how much I should talk about each one. And I realized that I maybe I was a little bit too brief with some of the stuff. And I realized when I was talking about this stuff down here, I was like, I'm spending much more time on this than I did on the other stuff. So wh when we're done with, with these two last shelves, I'm going to go through the collection <clears throat> again. Just pick out some stuff that I missed or that I would like to talk about. So for the people who want to stick around, because I have time, uh, I might as well um, make this video a bit longer because it is fun to talk about movies. And so for the people who want to stick around, you can do that. Otherwise, when I'm done with these two shelves, you, you, you're free to go, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, I'll let you know when that happens. Here, uh, where did we leave off? Right, the Christmas movie. So this is the drama. No, wait, it's not a drama section. No, this is the comedy drama section, I guess. Yeah, dramedies. Um... Nothing really to comment on here. I like this one quite a bit. American Splendor, if you haven't seen that. About Harvey P. Carr. A really great, interesting movie. Uh, Beautiful Girls. Um, it's okay. I like Young Adult quite a bit, actually. Um, Wonder Boys, Bagdad Cafe. I quite like those. And then... Um, Oh, <laughs> okay. So I was uh, I was thinking, because here we have comedies with a supernatural twist, and I was like, didn't I talk about that before? But those were the dramas. So I've done the same thing here. We have comedies with a supernatural twist. Um, Pleasantville was one of those movies that I saw on TV as a kid that I couldn't get enough of. Um, and just because, you know, Gary Shandling is in this, I gotta have it. It's not a good movie, but I have to have it for him. Um, then these are action comedies. And then we get into black comedy here, I guess. Um, what We Do in the Shadows, Australian Blu-ray. Uh, not a huge fan of what the Blu-ray looks like, but it's got some stuff on it that the other one that I had didn't have. And but now I can't remember what it is. It's just a couple of documentaries, I think. Uh, yeah, Mysterious Skin is one that I've liked for a long time. Uh, we have some John Waters movies here as well. And then... Um, I guess more black comedies. Uh, Gamo, Julian Donkey Boy, Spring Breakers, some uh, Harmony Korean. This is one that I liked a lot uh, when I was younger, Death Becomes Her. I don't know what I would think about that now exactly. This one I like a lot, Delicatessen, Ghost World is great. Um, this is an interesting movie, uh, The Draft Man's Contract, big fan, I am that of that movie, um, Coen Brothers, Blood Simple, great, um, I, don't, I don't know which one is my favorite out of these, I think maybe No Country for Old Men is my favorite out of the Coen Brothers movies, and then we have Jackie Chan and nothing but Jackie Chan on this shelf. So I am aware that a lot of these have been put out on Blu-ray. I, I have a couple of them. I have Project A on the Blu-ray set of that from Eureka and I have Police Story. But these, I think these have commentaries and maybe, maybe some other stuff that is not on the Blu-rays. And I, mean, I know, you know, Drunken Master has been put out. Wheels on Meals. Um, uh, what else has been put out on Blu-ray? Well few of these, I think. But uh, there's a bunch that I don't have. I mean, I would like to get all those Blu-rays from 88 Films. Um, it's just not a priority, and it's there, there's a lot of them. So, and I have all these DVDs. I mean, I, 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 I do want to get the, the ones that I have never seen, like Dragon Lord, uh, I'd like to get. But I mean, I have a pretty good Jackie Chan collection here, so I don't know, I don't know if I want to upgrade. It's just a lot of money. But uh, there's actually quite a few here that I haven't seen. You can see a few sealed ones, actually, so, yeah. But I was always a big fan of Jackie Chan, especially when I was a kid and a, and a teenager, but still, to this day, I'm a big fan of Jackie Chan. Um, some more martial arts stuff. Yet Lee. Um, and so I guess 
um, this is where we sort of, um, yeah, we have another one of those weird transitions from um, black comedies with the Coen brothers or crime. So I think, I think basically the Coen brothers, they bridged, well, they, they sort of, although going from Coen brothers to Jackie Chan is kind of strange, but I wasn't sure how to um, figure this out here. So it's a bit of a jump in, in genre, but eventually we get into um, sort of, again, in chrono chronological order, crime, action, thriller movies, a lot of good movies here. Sorcerer is great. Uh, Scarecrow. Uh, and then we got some Scorsese and then Tarantino as well. Um, my David Lynch collection is pretty, pretty shameful. I have, I have The Elephant Man elsewhere. And I have the straight story actually, but here we have Blue Velvet on DVD and Wild at Heart on Blu-ray. I mean, I wanna, I'd love to see Inside, um, yeah, in Inland Empire, and I'd love to see uh, uh, a Lost Highway, but I haven't seen them. I'd love to see them. You know, on this section, we we do actually have quite a lot of stuff that I don't feel like I maybe need to keep. I mean, the score derailed, uh, <laughs> Wanted, Walking Tall, Three Kings, Flight Plan, Road to Perdition on DVD, Crank. Yeah, I don't know, I don't feel like I need to keep all that, but for the most part, right now, my collection is basically the stuff that I like, that I want to keep. Um, and then eventually we go into Westerns, which I don't have a whole lot of, but I like the ones that I have. Um... And then I guess some maybe historical period drama films and then war war films. Uh, and then we gotta get up again <laughs> and continue with the war movies. I think um, have I sold uh, my Deer Hunter steelbook or did I just miss it? Maybe I did sell this steelbook. Maybe I intended to get another release of that. But I would say that maybe my maybe my favorite war movie is The Deer Hunter. I like war movies that deal with the effects of war rather rather than the war, the war itself. And I think maybe The Deer Hunter is a good exception of uh, exception example of that. This is one that I liked a lot as a teenager. Napola not gonna focus I think it's called I don't remember I don't, what is it in English before the fall no well anyway not Napola it's one that I used to like a lot as a kid or as a teenager I like you know I don't like steelbooks nowadays but th this is one that I will keep because this looks really freaking cool Forbidden Planet and then maybe maybe my favorite movie of all time 2001 uh, a few Star Wars Blu-rays and um, uh, Alien. This is all very common stuff here. Um, and then <laughs> I have Lord of the Rings here. Um, and behind Lord of the Rings, all these fucking superhero movies that <laughs> are mostly sealed. Well, half of them are sealed. I don't know. I mean, I've been, I've, I've been collecting these a few years ago I would buy these and, and I'd enjoy watching them but I was planning on some kind of marathon it's just never happened and at this point I'm not sure that I really am, I'm interested anymore but I'm not gonna sell I mean I think at some point maybe I'm gonna you know thank myself that I bought all these I mean now there's a few that I don't have the newest ones I guess but um, I guess somewhere around here I mean this is fantasy and then we get into well, we, well, this is actually sci-fi here. I've been bad now at, at talking about the genres, but sci-fi, fantasy, uh, a few more fantasy here, and then we eventually get into horror. And again, we have that in chronological order. So uh, 
King Kong is a good place to start, I guess. Some Hammer movies here, Wes Craven. And a lot of these DVDs I've sold. Well, not these ones, clearly, but a lot of my horror DVDs I've sold over the years. Like, a lot of them. Probably at least half of them. More than half. So, uh, this is what I'm left with, basically. Uh, and some Blu-rays, too. Some shameless Blu-rays. I just heard some people talking about on Facebook, and they were pretty unanimous, or they all seem to agree that Shameless is a terrible company, which I've never really um, heard before. <laughs> Maybe I've missed something. I don't know, I like the movies they put out. I have a few more um, of their uh, Blu-rays that I haven't seen yet. I just noticed now that some of them are transparent and some of them are not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Obviously, I would love to get these on Blu-ray one of these days. That's one of my main sort of... One of my main kind of um, wants on Blu-ray. Um... I think a lot of these movies, I wouldn't necessarily go back and watch them on DVD. I think I would, I think I maybe prefer to upgrade these to Blu-ray before watching them again. So I think I can sell a lot more of these. I, I just, I don't know. It's hard to know sometimes, like, what do I want to keep? What do I want to watch again? And sometimes you sell stuff that you regret, regret selling, but it's not that, it's not a big deal. You can, you can get them back. So um, I just prefer to... Um, to get some more, to get some space and to get some money back, it's just it's just good to um, to keep stuff. Uh, well, to kind of my collection is kind of like a river; stuff comes in, but stuff also is pushed out. Um, and then oh, my hands are shaking. Let's see if I can straighten this. And then um, uh, I guess black comedy horror movies here with some chroma stuff. And then finally at the bottom, I do have my Ford movies, like I said, um, in their own section, but with the exception of Asian sort of um, genre movies. So down here we have the Asian horror movies, uh, or actually the foreign horror movies, because we have some French stuff here as well, and Spanish, uh, Dead Snow, which is a Norwegian movie. Then let the right one in, which is a Swedish movie. And then quite a lot of Takashi Miki here at the end, I think. Uh, this, and then Ichi the Killer, and then everything to the right is, is um, Takashi Miki. Um, I've seen all these except for, I haven't seen this. I got this years ago, MPD Psycho, which is like a TV series. 342 minutes. I don't know what, exactly what this is. I never watched it, but I feel like I should at some point. So I I think maybe <laughs> that yeah that that's it. Um so if we just I mean that's it for the the collection essentially. That that's that's that is my collection. Um so it's not it's not well it's it's I mean it's a good size but it's not it's not <laughs> what am I trying to say? It's not that impressive. I mean, compared to other people, and I'm not really looking to compare myself, but, well, maybe compared to, to my own collection in the past, like, it's just the same. I mean, not, the titles aren't the same, but the amount is basically the same. Um, okay, so if we just go through this again, um, I do absolutely like Aero Video quite a lot. Um, I love these limited editions like Hellraiser. Uh, Necromantic, which is not a movie for everybody, but I actually prefer The Death King by the same director, Jörg Butkreit. Um I think that's a better movie, but um, I don't have it. Um, Society is a strange movie, but I like that one. Um, I th There is quite a few in this section that I haven't seen. Sartana, I haven't seen these movies. I've only seen the first, Female Prisoner Scorpion. Um, let's see, I haven't seen this, Eight Hours Don't Make a Day. I haven't seen the Human Condition trilogy. I've seen all of the Woody Allen movies, actually, like all of them. <laughs> so I've, com I've completed that. I'd like to complete the rest of it, though. This I got recently, uh, Akio Jis... <laughs> Jis... 
Jis Soji. Okay. Um, yeah, they, they, they look really good. But I, I gotta find the time for them. This I found years ago for really cheap. Ashes, Ashes and Diamonds, I haven't seen that either. I've seen everything on this shelf, the indicator stuff, which is overflowing right now. And I have a another order on the way. So I got, um, I mean, I just cleared some space down here. I it used, I, I had the, uh, the boxes that are, that, that are up there. They were down here before, but, um, I'm going to have to move maybe the box sets of indicator down here and keep the, the standard uh, re releases, whatever, um, here. But I've seen all the indicator ones. Uh, here's quite a few that I haven't seen. I haven't seen Macropolis on Blu-ray. I have only seen um, Profound Desires of the Gods and Ballad of Nariyama of the Imamura films. This, I think, is one of my favorite sets, uh, partly because of this movie, Profound Desires of the Gods, which is one of my absolute favorites. Um, but also because it's out of print and very expensive, um, so it's it's just it's just uh, you know nice to have some of those. There's enough of them that I'm frustrated that I don't have. It's nice to have a few of them, <laughs> of, the, of the out of print ones. Um, I actually haven't seen these two. A touch of sand, Legend of the Mountain. I'd love to see those. Just gotta find the time, and with this much stuff already on the coffee table or the you know i it's i use bring bringing more stuff out it's just hard to justify <laughs> so i don't i don't i don't typically put stuff on the shelf anymore if i if i haven't seen it but i have a lot of old stuff that i have bought years ago that i haven't seen uh the Murnau set i've only seen like one of these and um yeah, here's a few seals. This one I was thinking about just yesterday that I I really want to get into this because I'm very interested in these movies. Uh, I've only seen... Um, uh, what is it? Um, uh, <laughs> Day of Wrath, yeah. Woodfall, sealed. Um, I do believe I've seen maybe most of this. What's behind here? Let's see. Well, we got some. Okay, so this is Criterion's behind here. I actually sold a lot of my American Criterion's, um, just because I can't watch them, I, and I don't think I can get another player anytime soon. Um, but I've kept a few of the Region One releases. This I, I'm happy to have, but I haven't seen it yet. Berlin Alexanderplatz. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Fassbinder. I'd love to get into Fassbinder. So I have this and eight hours don't make a day. So I I, I have a couple things, but I, I would love to, to um, get more of it. Um, I don't know um, if I should um, talk about the Swedish stuff. I don't think that it's not really that interesting to most people. I am going to talk a little bit about the animated stuff. So let's see what I have here. I do, uh, this is a this is probably one of my favorite sections because there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, these are really great. Carol Simon. They've been put out now by Criterion and by uh, Second Run. So has put these out or some of these. But um, I'm happy with this Blu-ray. But I would like to upgrade. Uh, these are terrific. They're, they're, if you like stop motion, especially these two. They are wonderful. Um, oh, this one too, The Boy and the World. I would love to get this on Blu-ray because the, the DVD doesn't look the best, but it is a, it is a beautiful movie. I love that one. A lot of these that I like, um, like, you know, a lot. <laughs> this is great. I'm happy to have this. It's such a beautiful, beautiful day. I don't remember if this is region locked. Um, I don't know. Kind of hoping that it's not because <laughs> that's not one that I want to sell. That's another thing that I've gotten rid of. Basically, all my Region A Blu-rays. Why? Well, again, <laughs> I don't think I can can really afford a Region Free player any, anytime soon. But I, I you know, I, I 
like I said in a recent video, if I didn't buy so many Blu-rays, I could afford it. But it's all about priorities, and I just I I don't I don't see myself getting a region-free Blu-ray player again anytime soon. So I'm kind of hoping that this is region-free, so that I can watch it again. But I don't know if it is. Um, I know Melissa. I just saw Charlie Kaufman's new movie. I'm thinking about ending things, which. I wasn't sure if I liked until the last half hour, which just floored me completely. Um, <laughs> I tried watching this recently. This is by uh, Masaki Yuas Yuasa. Apologies for the pronunciation. Um, he made a film called Mind Game, which I actually gave to my sister. Um, but I love that movie. And then I got this also by the same director, Ping Pong, the animation, which might not look like a lot, but it's it's one of the fucking most incredible things I've seen in, in the animation genre. So <laughs> seeing things like this makes me realize how much I've missed out on in terms of anime. So I got this by the same director. I tried watching it and holy crap, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to keep up. Um, um, it's one of the few cases where I, I wish that there was an English dub because the, the images fly by at a rapid pace. The narration is insanely fast, so I just couldn't pick it up. So I, I just felt like just, just reading the subtitles, there was no break. And I'd, I've heard people saying uh, that it gets slows down after a while. So I am, I am going to try again. Um, also like this again all the anime I don't think I think I said that but these four are all the anime this is another another nice box set Belladonna of Sadness uh, these are the few kids movies that I have left and most of these I don't think I'll ever watch again <laughs> uh, Baby Stay Out was one, was one of my favorites as a kid a teenager actually more like but Space Jam was Oh god, am I gonna say that really? That was my jam when I was a kid. I, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Um, I don't think I really showed anything down here before. It's Always Sunny is one of my favorite comedy shows. How many do I have season 11? So I, I, I am missing a few. But I stopped buying these because they, <laughs> the DVD releases just got worse and worse. And eventually they were completely bare bones. I don't. I think they were DVRs, DVDRs, um, and I just stopped buying them. So I've been watching them else, elsewhere. But I don't think I've seen the last season. Maybe, uh, but that really is one of my favorite shows. So this is interesting, actually. This was one of the things that I would always, in the past, I would I would always um, buy comedy shows on DVD. That was one of the main things that I would spend my money on. And it was one of the main things that I would ask for, for Christmas and birthdays and stuff. And um, that's just not the case anymore. But I, I've kept kept the ones that I really like, the ones that I want to watch again. So, I mean, Roseanne, Frasier, Cheers. I don't want to sell those. Seinfeld, I don't want to sell those. The Seinfeld DVDs are actually uh, really good. Uh, great extras, a lot of bloopers, a lot of commentaries with the cast and... A few with Larry David and the writers. It's just really great stuff, these DVDs. So, like I said before, <laughs> when I went through this the first time, uh, I think I said that about the drama shows, but a lot of the TV shows, I mean, you can find them on streaming services, and not all the TV shows have special features that make me want to necessarily keep them. I mean, the stuff that I keep, I have to have a reason for keeping them. And um, yeah, a lot of shows I've sold because I just don't see a reason to keep them. I can see them elsewhere. But the Seinfeld box sets, I'm not gonna sell those. Mash, I still Mash is one of those shows. One of those shows that I watched once many years, about ten years ago. Loved it. It's my my cousin's favorite show. So I was always aware of that because of her watching it all the time. And then finally getting into it in 2009. And ever since I finished it in like 2011, I've been meaning to rewatch it and I still haven't. It's been so long. 
but I, I like that show very much. Um, two and a half men, I suppose. I don't necessarily need to keep. <laughs> I don't know that I'll watch that again. Um, King of Queens is one that I like. Um, I don't re-watch comedy shows too often. I'm actually watching Friends on Netflix uh, regularly. Whenever I'm eating, I like watching Friends. I actually have the box set, so I'm keeping this because uh, as much as I like Friends and as much as I w was watching it over the years, um, I never really watched the special features too much. I think just because uh, every time that I felt like watching Friends, well, I felt I felt like watching the show. Any opportunity that came up where I could be watching the special features, I was always like, well, but I'd rather watch an episode instead. And that's sort of still the case all these fucking years later. I, I remember buying them on DVD. I, I know that I bought the last couple when they were new. So this was about more than 15 years ago, I think. Um, and I'm still a fan of it. I don't know. How, it's, it is weird when you've been, been growing up with a show like Friends and kind of looking up to them. I suppose, in some way, and then right now I'm starting to pass them in age. It's a, it's a bit of a strange feeling, but uh, even though that's the case, the show still feels very much the same. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's one of the shows that I still like watching, but other than that, I mean, I have all these shows on DVD that I keep because I want to see them again, I just don't know when that's gonna happen. Curb Your Enthusiasm is one of my favorite shows. Um, what else do we have? I think we just have giant fucking box sets of Will and Grace. I, I don't want to have these anymore. It, they take up so much space. <laughs> Here's a few though that's not entirely common. Michael and Michael have issues. Wayne Days and Stella. I like all those, especially Stella is fun. Uh, from the people who made uh, Wet Hot, American Summer, and The State, and stuff like that. Um, it's Always Sun in Philadelphia. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I've talked about that already. Um, the Office. I'm a big fan of The Office. And because I was, I wanted to see Parks and Rec. Which I didn't like as much. I, I didn't actually finish. I, this is actually sealed. But I watched it on HBO. And I think I saw about half. And I just couldn't get into it. So I stopped. So I don't know. Um... This might be my main, even though I haven't seen this show in many years, this used to be my big, like, guilty pleasure, Desperate Housewives. Um, if I ever watch that show again, I'll let you know if I still like it. So, back here, the British shows, I didn't really show these at all, so if I can remove these giant sets without breaking anything, let's see. Okay, so I love my British comedy. Over the past few years, I've, like I said about these, I haven't bought a lot of uh, TV on DVD anymore, but that's not actually true when it comes to the British stuff. I've started to buy a lot more British comedy on DVD over the past few years. Not so much the past year or two, but I haven't given it up. It's just on, on hold. But I like a lot of this stuff very much. Um, you know, Peep Show is definitely one of my favorites. Just a fucking masterpiece of a show. It's weird that when you have a show filmed in POV view, um, at first it feels very claustrophobic, but after a while you can't imagine the show any other way. I love this Mel Brooks set, but you gotta go out of the way. Um, one only fools and horses this is one of those shows where <laughs> i would say it gets good after a while the first few are kind of bland to me i might not um I, I might i might make some enemies saying that but i love like in this section of the show it just gets really unique the characters are built in a way or evolved in a way that you don't you don't always see in a comedy show it's just profound at times in some of these later or in the middle uh, seasons. It's wonderful stuff. Um, trying to find things here that I can maybe offer a few things, a few words about that I that aren't totally cliche. 
but <laughs> uh, this is one show that I I really tried like I tried watching this I've seen all this I just don't like it I don't know why I kept watching it <laughs> this this I like a lot the worst week of my life reminds me a bit of Curb Your, Enthous Curb Your Enthusiasm so maybe that's why I like it um, oh this one I saw recently this was so good Wild West I'd never heard about this, I just found this one day on Amazon and I thought that I'd buy it. And uh, it's really fun and quirky and kind of surreal. Um, this is a very nice show, Outnumbered. Um, Love Soup, pretty good, with Thompson Gregg from Black Books, which... Did I talk about Black Books? I don't think I did. I think I missed it. Black Books is one of my favorites as well. And Black Books is one of those or original shows where, or one of those unique shows where all of the cast, the main cast, are, I mean, I've become a fan of them all be just because of that show. So Dylan, Mo Dylan Moran, maybe Bill Bailey in particular, and Tamsin Gregg, they are all great. And so I want to see things because they're in it. So that's why I have this, but it's, it's really good. Uh, for the most part, <laughs> here's John Cleese's new or half new show, Hold the Sunset. It's, it's pretty fucking bad, but <laughs> uh, there's a couple of good episodes. Um, Nighty Night, I saw this not too long ago, especially the first se series. They're in the wrong order. Yeah, really great stuff. Um, Legal Gentleman, my arm is getting tired holding it up like this over my head. Um, Legal Gentleman I saw recently, good stuff. So basically that's that. So I wanted to get into some more of this stuff. I don't know that I can get into all of it. But uh, ER is actually a show that I like a lot. Uh, this is one that I bought on DVD. <laughs> I can't watch it yet because of my... Again, my region free player, but this has John Turturro and Oliver Platt in it, two of my favorite actors. Uh, <laughs> this is one of those shows that I bought many years ago. It feels like a different. Li it feels like a different lifetime by now. It's so weird because I remember watching all of season one, half of season two, and then meaning to get back to it. This was 10 years ago, and I'm still meaning to get back to it. I, I'm never going to get back to it. Uh, this was actually a good show, Vinyl. I'm sad that they didn't make more seasons. I'm also kind of, it's a bit of a shame that they felt the need to throw in the gangster stuff, because the music stuff is, is interesting on its own. I mentioned David Lynch before. I saw Twin Peaks about... 10, 11 years ago, and uh, then I got the Blu-ray, still haven't seen it again, and I still haven't seen season 3 either, which uh, I just don't, I don't know, I have so many other stuff to watch, It's <laughs> I really want to sit down and watch these two, but uh, um, it's just a matter of time, I don't know, um, this is one of those box sets that if if um, you ask me like for 10 Desert Island picks, if I can pick box sets, this is one of them. Uh, this is Travels with Michael Palin. I just saw on Facebook that he's doing some, you know, he can't travel now with the pan pandemic, but he can sit and talk about his travels. So apparently that's going to happen. He's going to make some kind of show about looking back on his travels. So I'm looking forward to that. But this contains everything except for... Um, Brazil. I have Brazil in a separate DVD. I don't know. It's misplaced. There it is. <laughs> so this has has everything besides Brazil and the North Korea one that he did recently. Uh, but those are they're just nice. I I watched uh, Full Circle for the third time recently. It's still so good. And I have a lot of those kinds of shows, the travel stuff. I really, I, I enjoy those. Like this is maybe one of the most ridiculous things that I have, the real Marigold Hotel. I have this is one and three. 
my cousin has the second one and there's a fourth one out that I um, intend to buy. <laughs> I, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, that kind of stuff. And um, I have quite a lot of Top Gear stuff back, back here. Uh, oh, and, and um, Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor, they're doing a third show, Long Way Up which I'm looking forward to. I have a couple of um, Charlie Borman's um, standalone stuff as well, or his own stuff. So, Billy Connolly. This is fun. <laughs> this I really want to see again. Two greedy Italians. This is... I was sad that they, that they never made more of it, and now they can't because one of them died. Um, but this is this is really good. Um, okay, I'm not sure how much I can pick out and talk about. I mean, I could, I could keep doing this for a couple hours. I just wanted to make the video a bit longer and talk about some of the stuff that I missed. Um, in case anyone happened to enjoy watching it and you wanted to see more of it, but uh, it's hard in in this section. It's hard to to. Re I mean, I can move stuff out of the way, I guess, and. Show what's show what's behind. Yeah, all right. Anything interesting here? Maybe TV Junkie. That's a good documentary. Being different. Uh, pretty interesting documentary. This one I wanna. I'm actually gonna put this in front of my TV. Because I want to watch this again. This is one that I like quite a bit. Confessions of a Superhero. Uh, okay. And uh, I did talk about this stuff, yeah. What's behind here then? Let's see. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. Um, this is one of my favorites. Woodstock documentary. I don't love all of the music, but the, the documentary is really unique. Um, this is something I would recommend also. Uh, I feel like I should watch this again. Sig Ross. Um, Okay. Okay. So what I did here, finally, before we're gonna wrap this up, I moved all of the DVDs to the right, so you can actually have a look at what's behind here, because I didn't show that before. Uh, Dog Tooth. I want to see this again too, but I, I don't want to bring too many things out. Um, where? Okay, this one. This is such a great movie. Uh, the Hole, I think, in French down here let's see this is the Iranian stuff <laughs> well some of this is Iranian oh Mid Middle Eastern basically this stuff. Um, and uh, and then some Asian stuff um, one car Y big fan of these of these two and this one also and uh, this, this is one of those movies that I watched over and over again as a child or young teenager. I don't know that I've seen the DVD because I, I had this on VHS for a long time. It, I, I have some nostalgic memories with that. I remember being in a store with my mom wanting to buy it and she kind of wasn't sure if I was going to watch it because she thought that it may be too violent. Um, which it Turn, turned out to be not a problem, but I remember that moment. It's one of those strange, very specific, nostalgic moments that I have, and I, I even know in what section of what store, which has now <laughs> gone long out of business, this was at. So it's just one of those fun memories to look back on. Uh, some more mainstream stuff here, and this is where we end, I think, because I've now I actually think I've shown about everything. I mean, every title, every spine has 
more or less been in frame. So that's that's my cue to leave you, I think. If I did miss something, um, and I'm sure I'm sure I did, you know. But uh, I I I uh, I think this video has gone on long enough, and this is a little bit too rambly at this point. So I am gonna leave you with that. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Gonna take a shower and then edit this video, so thank you very much for watching. And uh, any questions are more than welcome. Bye bye.